gonna kick it off today with the Google search tips. There's some things that I teach when I teach Google that a lot of people are going, oh, I didn't know that. So I'm gonna give you just a few couple of tips that I think you wanna tuck in your pockets and take with you the next time you search the web. So stay tuned. That's what we're gonna cover in this episode of Marketing and Tech Tips. All right, tip number one. The first tip is one that very few people know, and it's about searching for images. Actually, it's more about letting images be found. Say there's a flower in my yard that I don't really know what it is, and I'm wondering what it is. Let Google help me. Watch how I do this. I'm going to minimize. After I minimize the screen, I'm going to find that flower in my yard. I'm going to click on images, and I'm going to Take that flower and drop it right there. And now let's see if it can identify what that flower is. Here's our best guess for this image. Very easy, very quick. My son once had a rash. We did the same thing. I know you're thinking, oh, why didn't you go to the doctor? Okay, hey, it was easier to do Google Images. A little cortisone cream and we were good to go. Now on for the next tip. Okay, so I'm in the image mode. I found that so often people do not get permission to use Google Images. And you really should or you're gonna get in trouble. So let's show you how you can actually use Google Images, but you're looking for the certain copyright. Let's say I'm looking for a flower on Google Images. Ah, oh, beautiful, but I can't use these. Many of them may be copyrighted. So what I need to do is go to the wrench icon, advanced search, come down to the bottom of the screen and see usage rights. Go ahead and give that a click and make sure you're looking at the ones that are free to use or share, even commercially. Give that a click, hit advanced search, and, and you're now you're looking at flowers that are labeled for commercial reuse. Not as pretty as the other ones, but at least we're safe. Again, most of these are probably coming from Creative Commons. And on to our next tip as we search the web. There may be a specific file type that you're looking for. Quite often, I'm looking for a PowerPoint or maybe an Excel spreadsheet. So what you need to do is tell Google, look, I'm looking for a listing presentation. I want to see some examples, but I also want to tell Google, give me a specific file type. And in this case, colon PPT. So your tip is make sure you type file type colon and the type of file you're looking for before you hit search. What's going to happen is Google's going to bring you the results of just that particular file type. On to the next tip. This next search tip is one of my favorites because quite often I'm lazy and I want to look for something very specific on one of my favorite websites, but I don't want to go to that website and hunt around. So I let Google do the work. Remember, I'm all about efficiency. So I know the search command, it goes site colon. And in this case, let's say I'm looking for something on lifehacker.com and maybe I'm looking to see if they've done an article on Gmail. I'll go ahead and hit click and you can see it brings up lifehacker.com and Gmail reference. On to the next Google search tip. Now it's time to make sure we make good use out of this little microphone that's in the far right hand corner of our search box. You know it's all about efficiency and quite often I'm multitasking. If I need to search the web and my hands are not free to type, then all I need to do is click on my microphone. Now take a look at this tip because I'm going to give you two little mm, kind of golden nuggets. The first thing is you can search by voice. The second piece is I want to introduce you to Google's conversational piece, which means that Google has a conversational feature where when you start talking to Google, it automatically knows what you're talking about. You don't have to keep referencing something. So what do I mean? Let's go ahead and give it a shot. How tall is Kobe Bryant? Kobe Bryant is six feet, six inches tall. Where was he born? He was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. You get the idea. So that makes it much easier for you when you're looking to find out more information about the first question that you asked. I hope you enjoyed these tech tips. And in fact, if you learned something new, give me a thumbs up. And don't forget, subscribe to my channel for more tech tips.